भगवते वासुदेवाय रीडिंग भगवद गीता एज इट इज द मोस्ट कॉन्फिडेंशियल नॉलेज वी डूइंग अगेन टेक्स ट्वेंटी टू रिस्पॉन्सिबली अन्य ये जन पर्युपासते तेषं नित्याभियुक्ता योगक्षेम वहां यह अनन्या हेविंग नो अदर ऑब्जेक्ट चिंतयांत कॉन्सेंट्रेटिंग Mom, on me. Ye, those who. Jana, persons. Pariyupasate. Properly worship. Tesham, of them. Nitya, always. Aviyuktanam, fixed in devotion. Yoga, yoga requirements, requirements. kshemam, kshemam. Protection. protection bahami, bahami. Carry. carry aham, aham. I. i the prophet's translation and purport but those who always worship me with exclusive devotion meditating on my transcendental form to them i carry what they lack and i preserve what they have responsive but those who always worship me with exclusive devotion meditating on my transcendental form to them i carry what they lack and i preserve what they have she the prophet's purport one who is unable to live for a moment without krishna consciousness cannot but think of krishna 24 hours a day being engaged in devotional service by hearing chanting remembering offering prayers worshiping serving the lotus feet of the lord rendering other services cultivating friendship and surrendering fully to the lord such activities are all auspicious and full of spiritual potencies which make the devotee perfect in self realization so that his only desire is to achieve the association of the supreme personality of godhead such a devotee undoubtedly approaches the lord without difficulty This is called yoga. By the mercy of the Lord, such a devotee never comes back to this material condition of life. Kshema refers to the merciful protection of the Lord. The Lord helps a devotee to achieve Krishna consciousness by yoga. And when he becomes fully Krishna conscious, the Lord protects him from falling down to a miserable condition life om agyana timarandasya gyananjana shalakaya chakshurun militam jena tasmay shri guru ve namaha shri chaitanya manobistan stapitam jena bhutale swayam rupa kadamayam didati svapadantikam jaya shri krishna chaitanya प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर शिवासदि गौर भक्त वृंद हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 
राम राम हरि हरि ओम ज्ञान तिमरंद ज्ञानंजना शलाकया चक्षुर उन्मिलिता जैन तस्माय श्री गुरुवे नम सो वर ऑल बोर्न इन डार्कनेस इन दिस मटेरियल वर्ल्ड At least I was born in darkness in this material world, so, <clears throat> and everyone is lost, not really knowing the purpose or goal of life. And they go through school and universities. They sometimes hear their parents, their friends, their uncles, maybe read some interesting books, and then sometimes. They describe different people approach God for different pur- purposes. Those who are in financial need, those who are distressed and great anxiety. Sometimes, during very difficult times, people resort to humbling themselves and praying to God, "Please help me out of this situation. I'm really in an awkward situation. No one seems to be giving me proper guidance or help. My own mind and intelligence, and everything's going wrong." So we pray, and then someone who's maybe a little bit inquisitive as to well, well, what is the truth in life? You know, why am I here in this world, and why is all this going on in birth and death and suffering and struggle? There has to be something more. You know, you start questioning our very existence. We start questioning who has created such a great manifestation, this material world, and it's a uh, this questioning. Is very much important for human life. Human life is actually begins when one questions atato brahma jignasa. You know, I am something more than the material body. I am spirit soul. And those who are even further advanced, they're really genuinely studying, see- seeking the absolute truth. They're. Um, Maybe studying scriptures, various scriptures, various traditions, cultures. I mean, we don't know how good and fortunate we have it that Shri Prabhupada came to completely dismiss all this illusion and all this confusion and all this uh, chance. You know that well. Well, maybe this book. Maybe I should try Buddhism. Maybe Christianity. Maybe Judaism or Islam or you know uh, this this book or that book and this scripture. Okay, people may recognize that there's a God, but they don't know really understand God, His creation, His His manifestation, His plan. So even though the Bhagavad Gita, when the Most uh, reputable books. Matter of fact, on Tuesday we're having a ceremony in Delhi. Prime Minister is coming to inaugurate the biggest Bhagavad Gita ever published. It's huge. It's I don't I don't know exactly how big it is, but it's huge. They invited me this morning, so I think uh, for the occasion we should go. Prime Prime, and this, this is very significant. Uh, Although he may think, well, he's a mundane personality. What's so significant about it? But the top leader of all of India, the country, is coming to Prabhupada's temple in New Delhi to respect and uh, offer uh, proper uh, glorification of Bhagavad Gita. And this is Krishna himself speaking. It's not that Arjuna. Was the most fortunate. He, only he had, only he had the opportunity to hear from Krishna, and all the rest of us were like five thousand years too late. We, you know, sometimes people lament, "Oh, I missed a ground floor opportunity." And such a, if I would have gotten into Amway back back forty years ago, I'd be a multi-billionaire. You know, it's like people are thinking they they missed the opportunity, but Bhagavad Gita. Is ever existing. Krishna spoke it to the sun god millions of years ago, and it's not that that Bhagavad Gita has changed in any way. And Krishna here, in, the, in various chapters of Bhagavad Gita, is describing, you know, what is yoga, 
karma, yoga, what is the, the process of achieving higher consciousness, how to control the mind, control the senses, you know, that yogi who fixes his mind on me, you know, who understands that I'm the Bhoktarang, Jagatapasang, Sarvaloka Maheshwarang, Suhridang, Sarabhutanang, Gyatvamang, Shanti Mrishtati, the last chapter, last verse of the fifth chapter, that Bhoktarang, Jagatapasang, that Krishna is a supreme enjoyer, and he is the purpose of all sacrifice. Bhoktarang Jagatapasang, Sarvaloka Maheshwaram. Sarvaloka, all the planets. Maheshwara, he's the supreme controller of all planets. He's created everything. Suhridang you Sarabhutanang, know? he's the friend to all living be beings. And then, Yoginam Apisarvesham, Madgatin Antaratmara, Shradavam Bhajate Yomang, Same Yukta Tatomataha, last chapter. Or sixth um, canto of Bhagavad Gita, or the, the sixth chapter of Bhagavad Gita, talks about the perfection of yoga. One who's fixed on meditation on Krishna, he's the topmost yogi. Because yoga means to link, to link with God, to fix our mind and attention on God. And so there are different prescriptions in the Vedic literature. The Vedas are vast, and Krishna's, Krishna says, Vedanta Krit, Veda Vid, Eva Chaham, that he, I am creating the Vedic literatures. Through Vyasa Dev, Krishna appeared, incarnation of God, that Kali Yuga is coming, it's time to write, write it down. You know, We've spoken it for millions of years, peop, and students have heard it for millions of years, and in other ages, human beings were actually much more qualified to uh, much, much more sensitive, whereas in this age, we're covered by lust, by anger, by greed. You know, somebody bumps us, we're ready to, you know, kill, knock them over. You know, y you ever notice that? You get, ang you get disturbed or I'm in line with my motorcycle and somebody just, you know, beeping their horn and cut me off and I said, you're not gonna get any further. I think, okay, I gotta love everybody, you know, because they're all, we're all part of Krishna. It's a great realization to have that you know that I should not get overly disturbed because somebody is interfering with my personal progress in life. But again, going back to the our good fortune that Srila Prabhupada, my my favorite verse, Brahmanda, Brahmite, Konya Bhagyavan Jeev, Guru Krishna Prasadipai Bhakti Lata Bij. That one who's Bhagyavan, very, very fortunate. He gets the mercy of Krishna. Krishna's in the heart, he sees, somehow or other, maybe I'm not advanced, you know, who, who of us, we're not advanced, but he gets the mercy of Guru and Krishna. Agyata Sukriti, this is like spontaneous offering. Lord Chaitanya appeared for that purpose in this age of Kali Yuga, not only to experience the love of Srimati Radharani and Krishna, what is this loving relationship, what, what is this intensity is felt but also to spread the Sankirtan mission, which is basically calling everyone back home, back to the spiritual world. Okay, kids, fun time is over. It's time to come home. No, I want to play some more. So we've been playing a long, long time. Krishna says, okay, it's enough. You're not going to be happy. There's no happiness here. It's like a little sandcastle. The, w the wave's going to come in and destroy your whole plans. Everything that you've built not only in this life, but in previous lives. And very strikingly, when uh, Chitra Ketu was praying, he wanted to have a son. He was a great king. And he had many, many wives, but somehow or other, he could not have a child. And he was really disturbed, bewildered, and wanted to, he was one of these distressed that wanted to have some... So, Angira Rishi, Rishi, they came, gave him a benediction. He said, Harsha Shoka, you can have a child, but it'll be a cause of happiness and distress. I don't care, just I want a child. So Chitra Ketu had a boy, and everyone was so happy. The palace was happy, the queen was happy, citizens were happy, the other queens were not happy. They were jealous. They think, oh, this king is paying all the attention to the wife with the child. And we're being totally neglected. He's the source of our unhappiness. 
So although he was overjoyed, people are very happy when the son, oh, but I, you had a birth, you know, the, the, you had a nice baby boy, people are ecstatic. Baby girl, they're ecstatic. They don't really care. They want to have a child. The child brings great happiness to the family, isn't it? So they um, decided that he's, he's the source of our misery, so they poisoned the child. And when the maidservant found the child dead, and then the queen informed the queen, the queen was completely devastated. You can imagine the love of your life was taken away by cruel mother nature, or cruel living beings. And the king, he was falling down and completely unable to even maintain him, you know, his, couldn't stand up practically. And Narada Muni, and he's always in the middle of all these intrigues <laughs> of uh, waking the conditioned souls up from the illusion, from the dream that this is my mother, this is my father, this are my, these are my grandparents, these are my children, these are my possessions, my my, my, you know. Mm. But um, not to show any disrespect. Obviously, we have affection and love for all those that we were, were put into certain families, and we feel gratitude, we should feel gratitude, that my parents took care of me and nurtured me, and by their combination, I was given, awarded a human form of life. And in this human form of life, I was somehow born at a time when Lord Chaitanya's mission was just starting to flare by the mercy of Srila Prabhupada. And Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, Bhakti Vinod Thakur, the Shad Goswami, Six Goswamis, we're not too far away. It's in our lineage. Brahma Gaudiya Vaishnav Sampradaya, extensive literatures, Vedic literatures, that we're not the body, we're spirit, soul, human life is not meant to be wasted simply on pursuing the famous dollar or rupee or mark or yen. It, it, everybody in this world is infatuated by wealth. If you, every movie, Hollywood movies, all the movies are about that, that how can, you know, the, the famous rob the bank, get the gold, get the money, get the girl, get the boy, get the, you know, beautiful relationship, and often the sunset on their bullet, Enfield, right? No, <laughs> maybe Harley, I don't know. But the idea that people fantasize that there's some happiness here, and if I work really, really hard, I'm going to achieve that happiness, because by my own endeavor, because we have that little... Ishvara, uh, Ishvara Hama Hambogi mentality because we're all little Krishnas. We're all parts of Krishna, so we're all little Krishnas running around trying to enjoy our own little universe. We have, we have our own little universes you know, surrounded by... I just came back from Florida. My, my grandsons are there and you know, my, son, my sons are there and, and friends. And you start thinking... Yeah, you know, this, not, things aren't so bad in this world. We can, we can actually get on. What's all this fanaticism about, you know, taking so seriously Krishna consciousness? But the fanaticism, as people thought that we were fanatics, I'm sure they still do, because only someone who's very, very determined and very eager to get out of material life will, will fully take up Krishna consciousness because the people see religion as a crutch, as something that, because you were not successful in economic development, in industry, in family life, you take shelter of God as a crutch. That, you know, well, like the sour grapes philosophy, keep jumping, jumping for the grape, uh, can't reach it, eh, it's probably sour anyway, who needs that grape? So, we, we're taking shelter of Krishna. But, Krishna very systematically gives everyone instructions in the form of Srimad Bhagavatam, uh, Rig Veda, Yajur Veda, Atharva Veda, and Vyasadeva, just to make it simpler for us, he, he took all the various uh, scriptures and 
kind of boiled it down and made a burfi out of it. You know, it's like made that really thick, cream, juicy burfi in the form of Srimad Bhagavatam. And then the essence of Bhagavatam, when it's being heard from the lips of a pure devotee, becomes more and more relishable because Srila Prabhupada emphasized Shravanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu, Smaranam, Padasevanam, Archanam, Vandanam, Dasyam, Sakyam, Atmanavedanam. Shravanam and Kirtanam. Hearing and chanting. And the hearing should come. And a good way of hearing is what we're doing now. But also when you're reading by yourself, read out loud. Hear it. Have Krishna enter your ear and head and heart. And Krishna's stating here in this um, very famous verse that um, those who always worship me with exclusive devotion, that you're not... I remember I was um, preaching in Miami, Florida. There were many Indians, Indian uh, families. So I remember I went to this one in uh, Mr. Shukla's house. And he had uh, a, on his altar... Durga, Shiva, Ganesh, and uh, you know all the various demigods, and all very respectable. But the basic idea is that you know worship worship all the gods because they're all one anyway. You know, ultimately, <coughs> when uh, I don't I don't know the, the full philosophy, but uh, when Prabhupada very strongly emphasizes that uh, demigod worship or impersonalists, they have limited understanding of the absolute truth because. Their fruits are limited. And even if you go to the heavenly planets, Chandra Loka, Indra Loka, you know, Mahara Loka, Siddha Loka, all these Lokas, if you look in the sky, there's so many stars, so many planets, planetary systems, and we're hearing many universes. So we can envision a beautiful place, maybe, you know, Hawaii or some beautiful islands where the weather is nice. The, ocean is there, the sea breeze, flowers, fruits, all these kind of things. But you can multiply it thousand times, ten thousand times, and the heavenly planes think, oh, I want to go there. You know, yeah. In life, not only a hundred years, but ten thousand years, or a hundred thousand years. But Abrahma Bhuvanaloka Punara Bhartano Arjuna, that from the highest planet down to the lowest planet, all are places of misery because repeated birth and death take place. So the, all, the bottom line is that we're forced to die. Everybody dies, especially here in Vrindavan. They come here and sometimes one in a week. So I, I think we've had a record of three or four in one week or five in one week. And isn't it? <laughs> I mean, it's nothing to laugh about, but it, this is the reality. The death is going to take place. And then when, when, when you're dead, do you care what they're doing with your, you know, your favorite jacket or what they're doing with the things in your drawer? And who cares? You're dead. You're gone. You know? Somebody says, oh, when I die, I don't, I, don't want, I don't want people coming to my funeral or see me. I say, what do you care? You're gone and you're dead and gone anyway. You've got, you got no control over it at that point. Because when you see the living being with the spirit soul within, animated, moving, expressing, showing love, showing care, and just en enthusiasm in general, we can relate to, we have a relationship with. But when the body is dead, Prabhupada said that uh, like sometimes, like a mannequin, it may appear very beautiful, very real, but it's, it's just not real. Or when a person, when, if there's a dead man or dead, dead woman there, you think, who's going to be interested to try to enjoy a dead body? It's like, you know, we think this is a sick person, a very mentally deranged person. So there's no uh, understanding and realization, unfortunately, in the material world. People are basically lost in a lost world. There are many um, songs and many books uh, all about uh, the illusions of material existence. Cheers. Hare Krishna. Hey, yeah, move the murdanga. So in Bhagavad Gita, Krishna is carrying what we, um, preserves what we have and carries, I carry what they lack and I preserve what they have. 
Uh, if we're meditating on Krishna, the best meditation is by chanting his holy name. Krishna himself came as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and he was, uh, after he came back, he was initiated by his spiritual master. Then all his student friends, because everything he described was about Krishna, what is, the, the names of Krishna, it's all about Krishna. So there are those students and teachers and persons puffed up or uh, thinking themselves very scholarly that were disrespecting Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And he thought that if they would offer me obeisances, they would be freed from their offenses. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu made a resolute determination that I will take sannyas. So Keshav Bharati came and Lord Chaitanya was praising him and Keshav Bharati says, well, you're the Supreme Lord. Whatever you want me to do, I'll do. Went to Katwa. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Nichananda was there, Chandrasekhar, and uh, who else was there? Oh, Mukundadatta, yeah. So there were, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu took sannyas order and he started his Sankirtan mission. Hariharaya Nama Krishna Yadavaya Namaha Gopal Govindaram Sri Madhusudan. He'd be chanting with all his devotees uh, with Murdanga cartel, singing, dancing. And unfortunately, in the Hindu society, at that time, they were feeling that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was, was an upstart. He was doing something different than the traditional you know, worship and rituals that may have, may have been present. And they contacted the Muslim ruler at the time, the Qazi, and he threatened, no, you, you stop this chanting, you're, you're, you're not following properly. So when he pushed that a little too far, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu organized the big 100,000 devotee congregation, and they all came to the Kazi, Kazi's home. They were related, and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and the Chan Kazi were speaking. He says, you know, Lord Chaitanya was saying, how is it that in your religion, the cow, you're drinking cow's milk, the bull is providing grains, and how is it you're eating your mother and father? But the Kazi was also very educated. He said, well, in your scripture also, it's recommending the cow sacrifice and the horse sacrifice, so many sacrifices. They had a, a discussion, but the ultimate uh, solution or, or conclusion was that the, the Vedic literature, if one has the potency to give life, rejuvenate the dead animal, then he can perform. But in this age of Kali Yuga, all animal sacrifices like horse sacrifice and cow sacrifices are, are totally forbidden because we are not qualified. We don't have the qualities to bring back the life. And also, it was just to prove the mantras and the, the yagya, the performance of sacrifice. So all these sacrifices in different ages fire yagyas, different, uh, many, many important materials were used, ghee and grains, and very expensive. And only kings could perform such great yagyas, even like the king of heaven, Indra. So, in every age, human life was meant for performance of sacrifice, of yagya. By performance of, of, of yagya, we please the gods. Lord Indra is happy, he gives rain. With the rain, the food is growing. Everything is good. The summertime, you know, when the rainy season is there, sufficient rain is there. Different seasonal changes. The everything is being controlled. Nothing's by accident. The gods are simply representatives of Krishna. But if we think that, like the Govardhan Leela, that if we simply worship the demigod, then he'll fulfill our all our desires. And Krishna's saying. You don't need to do that, because if you worship the Supreme Lord, then all the demigods are automatically satisfied. So the ultimate sacrifice, the ultimate yagya in this age is Harinama, 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 Eva Kevala, Kalua Nasteva, 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 Gatiranyata. That by chanting the Lord's holy name, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. By chanting this name, calling out to Krishna with love and devotion, undeviated, undeviatedly. Yeah. Although 
he himself, Lord Chaitanya says, Nam Nam Akari Bahudan Nijasar Vashakti Tatrarpita Niyamata Smarane Nakala Itadrishi Tavakri Pag Bhagavan Mamapi Durdaivam Idrisham Ehajani Nanuraga. That you have unlimited names like Krishna, Govinda, Rama, so many names are there. And you've invested all your potencies and your energies in your holy names. But I am so unfortunate that I have no taste for the holy name. Because the mind is so restless that we always find something else we have to do. Even when we're chanting, we're thinking, oh, I gotta check my bank account, or I gotta check this and this and that. You know, this, that. so many things the mind is proposing is much more important. Let me check my Facebook account because maybe something important there. You know, email, I have to check my email too. All these things. But um, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu sent Lord Nichananda Haridas Thakur uh, everywhere to preach the message, surrender to Krishna by, uh, by taking up this process of bhakti, by performing sacrifice, by shravanam, kirtanam, vishnu, you'll achieve all, all success, all good things. So we have a very limited life in this, in this age. Prabhupada describes that during a certain season there's a tiny little bug. I remember when I first came here back in, uh, not for, uh, to live here, in 93 we were staying, and even though there were screens, these little things came through the screens, and there was like thousands and tens of thousands practically laid down in the bed, the little like gnats. And they're, they're born in the daytime, and then at night they go by the lights, and in the early morning there's tens of thousands, practically millions of those little, little bugs dead. So some live for one day, some live for a, a week, some, some living entities live for a month, some live for some years. Isn't it? I think what, what, what dogs live 15 years, 12 years, and different animals. But human life, in this Kali Yuga, we, we might make it to 100 years. That's like the, pretty much the max. If someone lives a little bit more than that, they're considered, whoa, he's a really old person. And so the limited life that we have, and it goes very quickly. Life goes by very quickly. I do marathons in New York, book distribution, sometimes for three weeks to a month in New York. And at the beginning of the marathon, I think, oh, a whole month. Not, you know, not that it's a, a yagya, but it's, it's a yagya. You have, to, you, you have to get up every day, stay regulated, stay strong. You go out with your books and you're meeting people all day long. The weather conditions, the police are harassing you. So many things are going on. And you do this day in, day out. And before you know it, it's the last day of the marathon. How that, oh, I don't know, I don't know how it happened. You know, it just, it seemed like the month went by. And then the years go by. Just rem I remember just, just 40, 44 years ago or so, you know, you just, you just I as a young fellow, you come in, you think, well, oh, Krishna consciousness is nice. It is nice. And time does go by very, very quickly. So we should find ways, as it is described in this purport in particular, that there are many activities of devotional service, hearing, chanting, remembering, praying, cultivating friendship, we ha some people in the material world, there's some friends here and there, but not that many friends. Material life, basically a lonely, impersonal life. But in Krishna consciousness, we have thousands and tens of thousands of friends everywhere, and we're all pursuing the same interest of worshiping Krishna, da dancing, chanting, and taking prasadam, and surrendering to the Lord. It's a very good thing. And these activities are uh, auspicious and full of spiritual potency. So we may not know what is our calling, you know, is it, should it be deity worship? Should I, go out, should I go distribute books? Should I be a businessman for Krishna, give everything to Krishna? Our main interest is how to please Krishna. And Srila Prabhupada was expert in seeing different devotees and encouraging them and engaging them in Krishna's service. In the very beginning, you know, we might be, you know, putting irrigation system in, or digging ditches, or taking the septic tank and cleaning it out. You know, many things, or maybe in the doing pots, dishes, or cooking. And we think, oh, I'm not just a lowly servant. I'm, you know, I'm a respectable, I come from a respectable family. I can't do those kind of things. When we get in the mentality that I'm Krishna's servant, 
whatever Krishna wants me to do, I'm very happy to do. I, I have no other, um, how do you say, expectation that Krishna, only if you let me be the, tre the treasurer <laughs> in Krishna consciousness, or uh, unless I'm the president, I can't do anything, or uh, you know, temple commander, something. But Krishna makes arrangements through the agency of the pure devotees. And the pure devotee, he also has to undergo a lot of tribulation, but he takes that as a service for Krishna. Prabhupada underwent so much trouble. Srila Bhakti Siddhanta, Saraswati Thakur Maharaj, very powerful preaching, very much uh, eager to speak to kings or politicians or learned circles of uh, educators and or students or whatever. He was just happy to spread to, to spread Krishna consciousness. If you listen to Srila Prabhupada's lectures, 1965, 66 in New York City, he's alone, has no money, has no friends, but three hours a day he's in Tompkins Square Park chanting on a little drum, and then devotees start coming, people come start singing, dancing, participating and helping Prabhupada in this mission. And Prabhupada was not looking for some cheap followers. Very quickly, many yogis, swamis, and gurus took advantage of the fact that people were frustrated with material life, especially in America back in the 60s and 70s. There was a lot of hippies and the LSD and many other kinds of uh, hallucinogenic drugs. And people were interested in India, the Beatles, you know, Rishikesh and... Uh, Maharishi Mahesh Yogi and this one and that one and so many, uh, the taste of India, because India has uh, such a culture millions of years old and has the most authentic literatures about the science of self-realization, what is God, what is my relationship with God, how to get out of material existence, how to actually be successful in life. And this success is not judged by the, the size of your bank account or the kind of car that you drive or the kind of watch that you're wearing. Real success is judged by one's happiness in Krishna consciousness co by cultivating friendship and by, you know, having these realizations. Titikshava karunika suhrida sarvadehinam that one who's tolerant, he's peaceful, he's ready to offer respects to others, you know, that we become, we start contemplating and we don't want to waste our life, we're no longer interested in the mundane activities of going to nightclubs and, and just uh, partying like the rest of the people are doing, but we would rather utilize our valuable lives in the association of sadhus, of devotees. We came back from Kumbh Mela, we were there two couple weeks ago. It was actually a very uh, exciting time just seeing so many people wanting to get the nectar, Dhanvantari's nectar, and especially in these holy days, uh, and, and to see millions and millions of, of souls coming together for the purpose of enlightenment. Uh, you know, of course, there are many, all of us have different uh, degrees of surrender and desire. Not everyone has a pure motive. Maybe some join Krishna consciousness and after they achieve a certain amount of you know, stability, financial, some people become, uh, how you say, monetarily well situated and then they may leave Krishna consciousness. But we're not here to uh, necessarily evaluate why people come to Krishna consciousness. But the, just to appreciate the great fortune of having a society, this ISKCON society, because Prabhupada is ISKCON, uh, of course there's faults in every society, but if we're looking for faults, we'll find faults anywhere and everywhere, isn't it? I mean, the bumblebee is floating around, he, he might see the, the stools and the foul things, but he'll just fly right by there and go right to the flower and get the nectar. Whereas the flies, they, they pass by the flowers and nectar and go right for the stool. So we have a certain mentality, and we should have the mentality of wanting to 
develop or aw awaken our Krishna consciousness. And, and Prabhupada's given us the formula. It's a very beautiful medicine. It's like a doctor who really understands the patients and he knows how to give the proper medicine in the proper, if you feel confident about your doctor and uh, he's qualified and experienced, you can get free of your disease. So our disease is the bodily concept of life, that we're conditioned thinking that I am the body and life is meant simply to make my body and my bodily attachments comfortable in this, in this world. Whereas really our duty and responsibility is to stop the cycle of birth and death. Stop taking birth in this material world again and again and again. Sangsara dava nalalida loka. Because it's like a forest fire. If you're in the middle of a forest fire, unless, unless you're given some help, you're going to burn and, and, and suffer. All the, the animals who can run, they run away, but they say like the, the snakes and all those who cannot get away, they're burnt up in the fire. So material existence is a repetition of janma, mrityu, jaravyadhi, dukkha, doshanu, darshanam. Birth, old age, disease, and ultimately death. Krishna provides us all the ingredients for our life. He's also, we're a little part of Krishna, we're that, that seed, that atma, jivatma, we're part of Krishna, so Krishna's produced us. We've always, we're always existing with Krishna. Never was there a time when I did not exist, nor you, nor all of these kings, nor in the future shall any of us cease to be. So Krishna is telling Arjuna that we've always existed. Like when Krishna creates the, the material universes and then he glances at Mother Nature and impregnates all the living beings and then, and then puts everything into motion. So he pretty much he, star he starts, the, starts the whole show and, and we're... We're here, life after life, in different ideas, different forms, but basically it's birth and death, birth and death. And uh, sometimes you may think that um, I was born in a good family, and sometimes I was born in the hellish planets in, in a very miserable condition. So to be fortunate enough to be born in this age of Kali Yuga, in a human form of life, and to be so blessed as to have come in contact with a pure devotee, Srila Prabhupada, in the form of his books, his society, his Krishna Balaram Mandir temple, so many temples, beautiful temples. To see the beautiful worship of Krishna Balaram, Radha Shama Sundar, Shishi Gornitai, and to hear of the escape route from the repeated suffering of birth and death. It's very fortunate. So we, we should take advantage, take advantage of this opportunity of hearing and chanting and uh, maximize our time. Even if we're just sitting in the temple, just seeing the deities, you know, and hearing the sound vibration, that, 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 that vibration is cleansing. It's very, very cleansing. So don't feel like you have to be a great, great philosopher, scholar, super talented person. Gee, I can't play Murdunga, I can't play cartels, I can't play harmonium, I can't dance, that's for sure. You know, <laughs> singing is not that great. I can't concentrate when I start reading and fall asleep and then, oh man, I'm a mess. It's okay, you're in Vrindavan and by, by that, that very vibration of Vrindavan Dham, it's working on our hearts, cleansing the heart. And, um, that, that's why we're all together to hear about Krishna, to appreciate Srila Prabhupada. And uh, I said, never, never minimize what we have here. We've achieved something very great. And um, we should take advantage of that. So we have a few minutes. If anyone has any questions, I'll read the verse one more time. Ananyas chinta yantomang ye jana paryupasate te shang nityabi yuktanang yogakshamam vaham yaham. But those who always worship me with exclusive devotion, meditating on my transcendental form, to them I carry what they lack and I preserve what they have. Krishna is so kind. 
he does these things for us. Yes, Prabhuji. Yeah, material nature is like um, like the the prison guard. You know, I, if one is still not cleansed of his criminal activities, then he's going to be he's going to stay in prison. You have to go before the parole board, and they see that oh, your character has improved, and you've you've recognized that you need to be a law-abiding citizen, and that you've changed your ways. Okay, I'll let you out. So material nature is was created by the Lord because of our independent spirit of wanting to enjoy separately from Krishna so that's in itself is a criminal mentality that we're actually Krishna's servants we're meant to serve Krishna but that service is a very ecstatic loving emotion that the real love is actually transmitted between the living entity and the Lord by that service mentality and attitude but once we have a separatist mentality thinking that I can enjoy separately from Krishna then immediately we come to the material world so Maya is Krishna's agent this Maya, my Maya is difficult to overcome very difficult to overcome but those who surrender to me can easily cross beyond it so Krishna is giving us such a such a benediction a benefit that Look at, yeah, it's impossible. You can't do it. You know, it's like an ocean. How are you going to cross the ocean? But those who surrender, the ocean is shrunk down to the size of a hoof print of a calf. Easily step over it. So we're not thinking in a very proud way, oh, we're special people that, you know, we're, we're free from Maya. No, Maya's, I've told the story many times, one devotee in the same way was com complaining or indicating to Prabhupada that Prabhupada that there's, there's so much maya in the temple so you know it's, it's so hard so much maya Prabhupada said show me that place there's no maya we shall all go there <laughs> you know <laughs> you know we shall all go to that place there's no maya maya is there because we want it to be there we want we want we want that and that's what kind of keep that's what keeps us locked up in this material existence and the more we ex exclusively surrender to Krishna, then the, the, the Maya lets go of her tight grip. So the, the surrendering process is there. And the Shravanam, Kirtana, Vishnu is the surrendering process. Mahendraji, yes. Give the microphone, Mahendraji. Oh, I'm oh, sorry, you had more? Well, uh, on that line of thinking, <coughs> you know, Arjun asked this. Why? Why do we? Uh, why do we get distracted? Mm -hmm. that. And it's just as simply as lust. And the original understanding of lust, the word comes from uh, in English. The word comes from High German. It means the eagerness to enjoy. Mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, so that is. Remember, last year, Judge Wayne. Someone said to me, oh, well, I just can't, I can't uh, keep my uh, side on together. I can't avoid, uh, you know, uh, just overeating. I can't avoid, you know, I don't do my mouth. And I said, well, it's not that you can't, it's that you won't. I mean, that does seem a little severe, but really, since we're analyzing it, mm -hmm. that really is what it comes down to. Prabhupada also on several, in several ways on several occasions said that, said that uh, 
we Westerners and those infected by, West, uh, by Western materialistic culture uh, are not sufficiently afraid of Maya. Mm -hmm. We get too comfortable, as you were talking about, the, the nice island. <laughs> you want to go there, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I lived there for too long. Uh -huh. yeah. But he does, Krishna does say to Arjuna that constant practice and detachment, it will, by, by constant practice and detachment, you know, I, I, in my one, one previous class I described, if anyone's a musician or any, whatever it is, that sometimes you get a little frustrated with your efforts, you know, learning a language or, or you know, musical instrument, and you could, people very quickly give up the instrument or give up the pursuit for learning something that may be difficult. But if you, pr if you actually systematically pursue it and in, in, in your ultimate objective is something you know, profitable or useful by learning that language or by learning some instrument that you, you, know, you really love music and I really would like to play, then you take a nice teacher and, and even though sometimes there's moments of disappointment, constant practice and detachment will ultimately uh, help you to become more proficient at, at it. And, uh, it's not a mechanical, material thing, but Krishna is just giving some, it's just like a poor analogy. Uh, it's just giving us the example that don't give up. Just stay, stay on the path of devotion. Stick, stick to the process of bhakti. Stick to the guidance. Don't, your captain's giving you guidance. Okay, the water's rocky. I'm going to jump off this boat because it's rocky. What, what, it's much rockier in the water. So you, you might as well stay in the boat and, and, and suffer the little bit of rockiness knowing that eventually it will sober up and, and, and get calm and the sun will come out and the, all the rain clouds and all the you know, torture and torment of the tossing sea is behind you and then you think, oh, I'm sure glad I stayed on the boat. <laughs> so the boat of Krishna consciousness is very important. Association with devotees is very important and hearing and chanting. I see Krishna Murti Prabhu, my old friend from Miami. Yes. Uh, the other, uh, who has a nice analogy that I always remember. It, it's a sports analogy. He says he a horse? Sports. Oh, sports. He should stay on the field until the timer runs out. Oh. The timer runs out. Like you say, don't give up. Stay on the field until the timer runs out. And the timer runs out means death or what? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> By the way, he's a very good cook, Krishnamurti. I don't know, he, you know, he used to be our cook in Miami. Made very delicious preparations for the Lordships. Yes, Prabhu. In Gita, uh, Lord Krishna says, uh, I have no sleeping, I have no end. In some days, Shiva Bhagavatam says, I am the beginning, I am the end. How do you think that it is? Because we're accustomed to thinking that way. Everything in this world has a beginning and an end. So in one sense, come down to our level of understanding. So I'm the beginning of everything, I'm the end of everything. Oh, but there is no beginning and no end. Yeah, that's more advanced level. You know, if you really understood that, then you don't have to worry about the beginning and end. But it, just so that for our understanding that I am the beginning, I'm everything, I'm the creator, I'm the destroyer, I, I create the scriptures, you know, and then uh, <laughs> I give you birth, and I, I, I'm there at death waiting for you. It's like, oh, you know, it's a scary thing. So he is the beginning, he is the end, but there is no beginning and there is no end. <laughs> but, but, I, but I have a meeting to go to, so this, got, this has got to be the end. <laughs> There's no? Second existence. There's no second existence. Yeah. Srila Prabhupada ki jai. Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur Maharaj ki jai. Krishna Balaram Mandir ki jai.